Alexa, stop. All right, so now we are at 12.5. So 12.5 is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what I've done is I've written up here the actual theorem. So the theorem says if lowercase f, so a function, is a continuous function between a and b, and including a and b, and capital F is any antiderivative of um, lowercase f, then when you have an integral between a and b, so the high value goes on the top, the low value goes on the bottom, of a function in terms of x, your antiderivative is going to be the antiderivative when you plug b in minus the antiderivative when you plug a in. Let me give you a picture of this. So if I had a function, so here's my function, here's a, here's b, and I am looking for, that. remember we're talking about area under a curve, I'm looking for the area under this curve. Well, <clears throat> what this is saying is when I find the antiderivative of this function, so this is my f of x function, when I find the antiderivative of this, all that is is the difference between the antiderivative of b and I'm going to subtract off the antiderivative of a, and what I get is that area under the curve. All right, so it, it sounds a little more complicated than it is, but remember all we're doing is the put some light on me here, is all we're doing is we're finding antiderivatives, and now we're finding the difference between the two x values. Where in 12.1, we were doing indefinite, inter indefinite integrals, so we didn't have any values. We were just looking at a family of values, so that's where you put plus c. So now we're talking about a definite integral, where we have a definition between two values, so the plus c is no longer in play. So now we're finding an actual value. We're actually finding the area under the curve. So let me give you an example. So let's say you have um, an antiderivative between 0 and 2. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture so that you can see it. Now with all of these, when you're, when you're finding the antiderivative, what I want you to do is I want you to begin to think about um, drawing a, a graph because we're going to work towards when we're going to find the, the, the difference or the area between two different curves. Now what we're doing is we're going to find, I'm going to do a simplified version one. So this is a, a quadratic x squared, okay, um, hang on, let me do it this way, hang on, uh, 2x. Okay, so what we're doing is we're finding the area between 0 and 2. Okay, so we're finding this area right here. Now, how did I know it was a parabola? Well, it's because I already know what the, the antiderivative of that is. So I'm going to give you a visual. We're looking for the area under the curve. Okay, and the curve has an, a derivative. Remember, you're given the derivative now. You're going backwards and finding the antiderivative. So remember how we do this. We find the antiderivative. So this is a 1. I'm going to add 1 and then divide by my new exponent. So my antiderivative is x squared. Okay, now I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and 2. So the notation is I'm evaluating, I find my antiderivative, I'm evaluating between 0 and 2. All right, my higher number always goes on top because we're subtracting high to low. And now I'm just plugging in the value. So when x squared, when x is 2, I get 2 squared. And then I'm going to subtract off when x is 0. All right, so again, I'm going to continue. 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, so my answer is 4. So what that means is this area under the curve, if I were to break it up and get two, you know, this is a rectangle, this is a triangle, this is a um, trapezoid, and this is a triangle. If I were to get the areas of each of those pieces and added them up, 
my answer would be 4 square units, or 4 units squared. Okay, so all I've done is I've found the antiderivative, and then I evaluate it between two points. So let me erase this, and then we'll do some more examples. So this is all 12.5. 12 <clears throat> so most, most of my classes have um, liked this transition because it's, it's more direct. We get to actually see values. So let's look at the antiderivative of 3x squared dx. And I'm going to say it's between 1 and 5. All right? So first things first, you're going to find your antiderivative. So remember, antiderivative, we add 1 to our exponent and then divide by the new exponent. And then I simplify. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. x to the 2 plus 1 is x cubed. No more plus c because we're looking for a definite integral. So our antiderivative is x cubed. I'm going to evaluate that between 1 and 5. All right? So notice the notation. I'm evaluating it between 1 and 5. <clears throat> All right, so now I just plug my values in. So when x is 5 cubed, and when x is 1, and then I cube it. So, excuse me, 5 cubed is 125, 1 cubed is 1, so the area under the curve is 124. Now, if you need a visual, remember you can always go to desmos.com. And you can actually look and, and plug in your antiderivative. Right? Plug in this value in decimals.com, and then you can actually see the, the, the curve of the function. So the function is going to look something like this, and I am looking for the area. It goes all the way up here. So I'm looking for the area between 1 and 5, which is about 124 units squared. Okay? Let's try another one. Finding the antiderivative of... Uh, 3x plus 4 dx. And we're going to evaluate between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so finding the antiderivative, <clears throat> we're going to, we have a 1 plus 1, and then dividing by my new exponent. So I have 3 halves x squared. And then remember, when it's a constant, it's x to the 0. So we're adding 1, and then we're going to divide by 1. So it is 4x. So now I have my, my definite integral. And now, because I ran out of room, I'm going to evaluate it. So I have 3 halves x squared plus 4x evaluated between negative 1 and 1. So I'm going to plug in my higher number first. All right. Now, this is where it can get tricky. Remember order of operations. You have to, you're subtracting off the whole thing. So what I do is I put brackets around each part. So this is when I'm evaluating at 1. And then I'm subtracting off when I evaluate at negative 1. All right. So then what it does is it, is it organizes it a little bit better. So I'm going to get a value in this first set of uh, brackets. So 3 halves times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. 3 halves times 1 is 3 halves. 4 times 1 is 4. So this is, again, in my first set of brackets. So 4 plus 3 halves is 5 and a half. And you can check my values on that. But 3 halves is the same as 1 and a half. So 4 plus 1 and a half is 5 and a half. And then I'm subtracting off what's inside this bracket. So negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 halves is 3 halves. Oops, 3 halves. And then 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4. So inside this bracket, I have negative 4 and a positive 1 and a half. So negative 4 my, uh, plus 1 is negative 3. And then another half, so I have negative 2 and a half. And again, if you don't trust me, use your calculator. 
I don't trust myself. Let me grab my calculator. What did I do with it? <clears throat> Oh yeah, two and a half. Okay, so negative two and a half. But remember, this negative is within these brackets. I still have that negative. So you have to be very, very aware of your negative positive signs. So now I have five and a half minus a negative two and a half, which is the same as five and a half plus two and a half. So my area under the curve, that's not this curve, it's a different curve, my area under the curve is 8 units squared, okay? Now, if you plug it into Desmos, if you plug it into Desmos.com, here's what you're plugging in. You're plugging in that value into Desmos.com. And then that's the graph that you're going to um, come up with, okay? So make sure you plug in the antiderivative, and then you can, you can see, the, you can see the, um, the graph of it, all right? All right, so now let's try a couple of the specialty ones. <clears throat> so remember, your specialty types of um, functions are ln of x, e of x, the log, or the exponential function. We're going to just stick with e of x and ln of x. So I'm going to evaluate between uh, 1 and 3 of 3e to the x power dx. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. The 3 stays, so it's 3e to the x. And now I'm going to evaluate that between 1 and 3. So I'm going to plug in 3e to the third power minus 3e to the first power. So you can do this um, uh, on your calculator. I've got to find my good calculator. There it is. <coughs> okay, so you're going to use your E button, so 3 times E raised to the third power, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the values I get, because I want you to check on your calculator to make sure that your calculator is working correctly. So this is 3 E to the third power, and then when I do 3 times e raised to the first power, I get minus, and I get uh, 8.154845, and so on. So that's 3e to the first power. So now I'm just going to uh, subtract those two. So I go 60.2566.1077 minus 8.154845. And I get 52.1017677. And then on your My Math Lab, just go ahead and it will tell you where to round it to. Let's see. It's either going to be a decimal. Okay, so the, the instructions say simplify your answer or type an integer or a simplified fraction. So when you have those instructions, they do not want decimals, okay? So what you're gonna do is, I have a TI-84, so what I'm gonna do is I go, I hit my math button, and then it, the number one says fraction. I hit it and then enter it again, and it won't do it. Okay, so um, with the E, let me see if they do an E on here, hang on. We may not. You guys might be. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so it says round to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so with E, they do allow you to use um, decimals. So remember, thousandth, this is tenth, hundredths, thousandths. So you look at the fourth place value. If the fourth place value is between um, zero and four, your thousandth place stays the same. Since this is a seven, my thousandths place goes up. So you're rounding to the third decimal place, okay? All right, but if it says type your answer as an exact answer, an integer, or a fraction, you can't do decimals. You have to use, keep everything as in fraction form. So you should be able to um, use your, uh, your 
uh, decimal to fraction. So if you have the TI-30 calculator, you should have a button that looks like this. I believe that's what it looks like. D switch to F and F switch to D. So this is for decimal and this is for fraction. So that's how you change between fraction and decimal. You just use that, that fraction, D to, D to F or F to D button. Okay, so now let's try a, another specialty type function to find the antiderivative. So anti, probably doesn't look too good, antiderivative of uh, 2, and needs to be tossed, 2 ln, nope, sorry, I'm going backwards, um, 2 over x dx. Okay, so anytime you see 2 over x or 2 over uh, um, uh, a denominator and there's an x in it, think natural log, right? Because when we were going over those specialty terms, remember when you found the derivative of natural log, it was 1 over x. So you can rewrite this as the antiderivative of 2 times 1 over x dx. Okay, so the antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. So this is actually 2 ln of x. Remember, it can only be a positive value. You can't have negative um, natural logs. And we are going to evaluate it. I didn't put it in here. Um, we're going to evaluate it between 1 and 3. Okay, so 1 and 3. So it's 2 times the natural log of 3 minus 2 times the natural log of 1. And again, now you're going to use your calculator. So you're going to go 2 times natural log of 3 and then close your parentheses. And again, I'm just giving you the values that I'm getting. 2.19722457 minus 2 times the natural log of 1, which is 0. Okay. So your answer is 2.19722457. Notice I am not rounding until the very end, until after I have my complete solution. If you round it here, and then say this is another decimal and you round here, now you're rounding twice and then you're going to round again. So you've really lost a lot of the value of the function. So make sure you keep all of the decimals and then round at the end. So if we're rounding to three places, this is the third place. This is where I'm looking, so it's 2.197. The 2 makes the 7 stay the same. Okay? All right, I believe that's it um, as far as antiderivatives. If you come across a negative exponent, just remember that you are adding 1. So if you had the antiderivative of um, 2x to the negative third dx, right, we are adding 1 and then dividing by the new exponent. So negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 2. So 2 divided by negative 2 is negative x to the negative 2, and then you are going to evaluate it between uh, 1 and 3. Okay? All right, so I'm going to stop here, and then I'm going to come back and do an application.